Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor, on a mission to become the world's greatest tutor. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Pascal's Law, which is a very cool principle in physics, whose most famous real-world application is the hydraulic press. And this is the device people use to lift really heavy objects, like cars. You basically push on one side, and the other side goes up, and it looks like, as if by magic, that you can apply a small amount of force on the small side, and the big side outputs a tremendous amount of force, allowing you to lift very heavy objects. But how is this the case? Well, let's talk about the equation for Pascal's Law. So the equation essentially says pressure 1 is equal to pressure 2. And this is only true if the fluid that we're talking about is contained, in other words, it has a finite amount of volume, and also the fluid is more or less at rest. Now, since pressure is equal to a force divided by an area, this equation can also be written out as force 1 over area 1 equals force 2 over area 2. And so now let's see what this looks like with my hydraulic press. So we're just imagining that we apply some force F1 on this cross-sectional area right here, which we'll call A1. Maybe it's a circle, in which case it's pi r squared, whatever. And then on the other side, force 2 is going to be pointing up with a much larger area A2. And essentially what Pascal's Law says is that a small amount of force on the small area is going to produce a large amount of force on the big area side. And just to prove that super quickly with fake numbers, let's say area 1 and area 2 are 1 meter squared and 10 meters squared, respectively. If I apply 10 newtons of force on the left side, the only way this stays equal is if it's 100 newtons on this side, because 10 over 1 is 10, and 100 over 10 is also 10. So see, seemingly out of nowhere, we create 10 times the force if you just increase the area by 10 times. Now, of course, there is a trade-off to this, or else this is kind of just infinite energy. And the trade-off comes from work. So in other words, work 1 must be equal to work 2, from the input to the output. And we remember that work is equal to a force times a distance. So in other words, F1D1 equals F2D2. And hopefully you can just trust me when I say this, that a small force F1 is going to require a very long distance D1. And at the other side, F2 because it's a very large force, is going to only go up a little bit. In other words, that distance is very small. So again, with my fake numbers, if I say 10 newtons for F1 and 100 newtons for F2, and let's say I push down on it 1 meter on the small side, that means it's going to be 0.1 meter or 10 centimeters on the large side. So practically speaking, if you want to use Pascal's Law to lift like a car, you're going to have to push down very, very far on the small side in order to raise that car any noticeable distance. So that's the equation and the picture. Now let's just do some practice problems. So number one, I have my hydraulic press, and I need to use my hydraulic press to lift a car whose mass is 1,200 kilograms. I'll tell you that the diameter of the left side is 1 meter, and the diameter of the right side is going to be 4 meters. And the question is, what force do I need in order to lift this car? So first of all, this is going to be Pascal's Law. In other words, pressure 1 equals pressure 2, so force 1 over area 1 equals force 2 over area 2. Now since these are circular platforms, and we know that because I gave a diameter, which means it's a circle, I need to use the area of a circle, area equals pi r squared. But since r is radius, I need to convert diameter to radius. Luckily that's very easy, just divide both of these by 2. So 0.5 meter radius for the left one, and a 2 meter radius for the right one. So in other words, these denominators are going to be pi times 0.5 squared, and pi times 2 squared. And yes, the pi's will cancel out eventually. Now for F1 and F2. Technically we're solving for F1, that's the force on the left side, so we need to know how much force we need 
to lift this car? And the answer is, if I have a force gravity going down, mg, I need that output force to basically be greater than or equal to the force of gravity. So what I'm saying is, F2 has to be at least gravity, mg, where mass is 1200, g is 9.8. Let's plug that in the calculator and see what we get for F2. 11,760 newtons. So then F1 over pi times 0.5 squared is going to equal 11,760 divided by pi times 2 squared. So then now we just have to simplify this. I notice the pi's cancel, and I'll probably solve this by cross-multiplying. So F1 times 2 squared, in other words, 4F1, is equal to 11,760 times 0.5 squared, which is going to be 0.25. So anyways, I'll just plug this all in the calculator and divide both sides by 4, and we'll get an answer of 735 newtons. In other words, this is 16 times easier than trying to lift a car by yourself. So even you could actually lift this car, potentially. So that's it for part 1. Now for part 2, for that exact same hydraulic press, where we had 735 newtons on that side, and 11,760 newtons on that side. I want to know the distance, how far I need to push this side down in order to raise my car up four meters. If you think you can do it on your own, go ahead, pause the video. If not, here's the solution right now. So first of all, as soon as we get distances involved, we are using the work one equals work two. In other words, force one, distance one, equals force two, distance two. And really the problem's very simple from here. Force one is 735, distance one is what I'm solving for. Force two is 11,760, and distance two is just four meters. So just divide both sides by 735, and we'll get a whopping 64 meters, which means if you're a mechanic and you own your own garage, you're gonna have to have a 64 meter high hydraulic press. In other words, this is going to be at least 10 stories high, so I hope your mechanic has a big enough roof. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.